again, and thank you very much for joining um, our webinar. My name is Alex Kojo Buahoma, Kojo Buahoma, the Monitoring and Evaluation Lead for the Green Project, and I'll be moderating the session, which focuses on the, on the WASH sector. Thank you once again for taking time off your busy schedule to, to join this webinar. Today's webinar forms part of the series of webinars that the Green Project has been organizing over the past couple of weeks. As part of, of project implementation, the team has been conducting what we call market scans. And the market scans have focused on, on the three subsectors that SMV focuses on, but which are also you know, the, the sectors that the Green Project is focused on. So these are the agri, agri sector, renewable energy sector, and the wash sector. In a series of webinars, we've already held webinars covering the renewable energy and the agri sectors. We've also had an additional webinar on, the, on, the, on COVID-19 and its implications for service delivery to MSMEs in Ghana. Today's webinar, which is the final in a series of webinars focusing on, on the market scans for the green project, focuses on the, on the wash sector. And our expectation is that, you know, by, by the time this project, this presentation is over, um, we would together have a very clear idea of what, um, what subsectors in a, so far as WASH is concerned, that the project wants to focus on. So before I move on to, to talk about the objectives of, of the webinar, I would like to, to go through a few house rules for, for, the, for, the, for the event. First is to say that um, the presentation will take you know, roughly between 25 to 30 minutes. During that time, if you have any questions, um, you can use the Q&A session to, to, to highlight them. If you have any concerns about the feed, you can use the chat session to, to mention them. In addition, when the presentation is over, and as we've done in all the other webinars, there would be opportunity for all of us to, to either contribute or to ask questions. Um, for that to happen, there is, there is a raise hand function on the webinar, which you can use. And once that catches our attention, we will call you. Let me also use this to, you know, let you that for all of you who are participating, your mics are on mute. But when, when you raise your hand and we want to, to give you the opportunity to either contribute or ask your question, it would be, your mic would be unmuted then you can make your presentation. After that, your mic would be muted. So just a few house rules. Now let me move on to, to the objectives of the, the webinar. So the webinar covers the, the, wash, the wash sector. So that's water, sanitation, and, and hygiene. Like I said, we've been conducting market scans in the three sectors that the project is interested in. Today's webinar is intended at um, validating the findings of the, the wash the wash market scan. We will also use this to we'll also use this to introduce and receive feedback on our planned interventions in the wash sector. And you know we focus on we implementing into regions. So we want your, your perspectives on what our interventions are in the wash sector. And we will specifically seek your input and feedback on, you know, whether the right subsectors have been considered. And these are some of the questions that we'll be, we'll be getting back to you on. And how do we deal with issues of perception and attitudes, which can help us create viable green wash businesses? So we'd like to hear your experience and perspectives on, on that. And are there local wash companies that can offer internships and job placements? Um, what will be the value proposition for, for an offer? So we know that in this webinar, there are, 
the both public and private sector stakeholders. So we'd like to hear your views on opportunities for internships and job placements. And what are best practices in demand creation? Let me also, you know, one, one thing that I need to mention is that this webinar is being recorded and a week after, a week or, or around about that after this webinar, we will make, we'll make the entire presentation and the questions publicly available on our, on our website and we would send, you know, the, the link to all of you. So thank you very much once again for, for joining us. Without wasting much more time, I would now invite the, the project director to come in and briefly introduce the, the green project. The project director is in the person of Beatrice Schenkel. Uh, Beatrice, please. Yes, good morning everyone, also from my side. Um, thank you for joining the green webinar on the WASH Market Scan. Um, green is an acronym and it stands for Boosting Green Employment and Enterprise Opportunities in Ghana. Um, it's a four-year project that is funded by the European Union through its EU Trust Fund for Africa. It is jointly implemented by UNCDF, that is the United Nations Capital Development Fund and SNB. Green aims to contribute um, to supporting sustainable and climate resilient local economies in the creation of green jobs and green enterprises. Um, the project is being implemented in two regions, the Ashanti and Western regions of Ghana, and is targeting youth, women, returning migrants, and MSMEs as, as target groups. Green has four result areas, and as you can see, two of them are being spearheaded by UNCDF, and two are implemented by SNB. The first result area looks at stimulating local economies and creating short-term job opportunities through green and climate resilient investments at the local level. Result two focuses on improving the employability and entrepreneurship capabilities of youth, women, and returning migrants. Result three aims at creating access to and uh, use of financial services, also leveraging on remittances. And result four is focused on the incubation and acceleration of green SMEs with the aim of creating decent and sustainable jobs for youth, women, and returning migrants. Within the green project, SNV focuses on its three core sectors, um, which are agriculture, renewable energy, and wash. And as Alex mentioned in his introduction, um, today we'll be talking about the WASH market scan. Thank you very much. Alex, over to you. Thank you very much, Beatrice, for, for, for the presentation on the, on the green project. So up next is the, the actual presentation on the on the wash, wash sector market scan. The presentation will be made by a colleague, Mr. Enoch Kujo, who is also the senior skills advisor for, for the project, but he also provides support on the, on the, on the wash sector, helping us um, look at you know, the technical issues and what the opportunities are in the wash sector. So he is the one who will be doing the, the presentation today. Is the one who is in the hot seat. Um, so, Mr. Enoch Kujo, I hand over to you now. Thank you, Alex, uh, and good morning also from my side. Uh, thanks so much for the opportunity and also for making time out of your busy schedule to join us. Um, I think I have a very simple task. My task is to communicate what, as um, Green, we have also found out within the wash sector, so that is it. OK. 
Okay. Be before I go into the scan findings, I permit me to actually sell some small amount of ice to the Eskimo, because I know we, we are talking to practitioners in the wash sector. And so when we are talking about the importance of wash in the fight against COVID, uh, I mean, you know it all, but of course, just for the purposes of re some of the things that SMV is also emphasizing on, for us as SMV, we think that securing safe and accessible, particularly also affordable water sanitation hygiene services, it's very important for the prevention and further spread of COVID-19. So that is very important for SNB. Again, also uh, for us to do this, we, we need to, we are also scouting out as SMB global, and then also for the Green Project, innovative uh, technologies and approaches that are accessible and aff affordable for everyone to, to use so that we can prevent a uh, uh, further spread of COVID. Again, we also think that building the capacity of young entrepreneurs is very important within the value chain of WASH so that they would properly define the market and customer, uh, be customer focused also for their products that they have in the market, particularly within this era of COVID-19. Uh, again, we know the difficulties we are struggling with as um, SMEs within the sector and also as practitioners within the sector around financing. And so ensuring access to affordable finance, financing is very important for MSMEs within the sector to also be able to be liquid and support their operations. So basically this is what I want to uh, share with you in this line around the importance of WASH in the fight against COVID and then how SMV actually also see our contribution in this light. I know we know that access to safe drinking water and improved environmental sanitation is very important for achieving the wider outcomes in the economy. For you to be able to achieve very good results in livelihood, health, education, water, sanitation, is central. And we know that. And policy makers are aware. We are also aware. However, uh, there is still, you know, the lack of access to safe water sanitation facilities in Ghana. Um, and, and then also, it's important that we, we, we know that. They, if we reflect back on the MDGs, before the end of 2015, we had actually increased the percentage of people with access to safe drinking water to about 14% from 64 in 2000 to 78%. That's about 14% of progress that we're able to make. Again, for sanitation, we didn't do much. We're around 3% before the year ended in 2015. And then the SDG came in with very clear goal on clean water and sanitation. And I know you know some of the uh, policy, um, the advocacies that we did in order for us to have a specific goal for what clean water and sanitation. There are close to 11 indicators, which I know we are very familiar with, but what is important for us in, in doing this process of our market scan was to look at how safe managed sanitation is done and then supply of water is, is also done. So these are the two uh, main focus for which we looked at safely manage sanitation and safely manage water services. So where are we as a country? So we, we, we picked data from the mixed report 2017-2018 uh, and realized that as a country uh, in terms of coverage now, we are hovering around 86% uh, for water. Uh, within the rural urban divide, there is still that divide for rural and urban when it comes to uh, water supply. Uh, also, Beatrice talked about the fact that this project is being implemented in the two regions, in Western and Ashanti region. So we decided to also look into the two regions and see the coverages at the regional level as well. And as you can see, uh, Western region is doing about 82%, whilst Ashanti is doing about 92%. I know, again, we, 
know about access. We also know about quality and all that. So those, those are the things that as practitioners, I, I'm, I'm very sure that we are very abreast with. But again, for the purposes of our market focus approach, we want to look at it also from a combination of basic drinking water, sanitation and hygiene, you know, in terms of access. And we found also in the mix that it's about only 12%. Uh, and then when we come down to the local level, which is the regional level at Western and Ashanti region, we are doing approximately 12 in Western region and 14 actually in Ashanti region. So that is the bit of overlook, uh, uh, outlook of how the coverage is like in terms of water sanitation and hygiene facilities in Ghana. And for us, uh, in terms of relevance, we see it as an opportunity for a lot and lot of public-private uh, engagement, public-private pri involvement and participation in the water sanitation and hygiene uh, space. Do we have policies? Yes, we had to look at what are the policy environment uh, promoting and supporting uh, the space. And so we found, again, the, the national water policy, the environmental sanitation policy. These policies are actually up for review, and I, we all have been part of the processes in terms of reviewing uh, these, uh, revising these uh, policies. Of course, the, the National Environmental Sanitation Strategy in Action Plan, the NESAP, uh, and then the Water Sector Stra Strategic uh, Plan also are available for us. In all these policies are uh, setting out Ghana's commitment to, and also to provide the framework and also providing the framework for achieving our vision of sustainable water and basic sanitation for all by 2025. So all these things are working towards uh, these, uh, our vision of uh, sustainable water and basic sanitation for all by 2025. So basically that is the policy uh, environment and strategies that we found there. But again, for us, we're also looking at how can we, as a market-oriented project, see the relevance of these policies to us? How do we build on these policies in order, or how do we leverage on these policies in order to also communicate and get more people into, more business, private entrepreneurs into the space? If you look at the water sanitation policy and the other policies, clearly, all of them pursues private sector engagement and, and asking for market-based approach to wash uh, delivery, which we know. When you also look at sanitation, the poly, uh, polluter pay principle is clearly also talking about you pay for the waste you generate, which is clear. Rural sanitation model clearly also uh, builds on the sanitation market uh, model also to add on to CLTS as, as, as part of the thing. So, all these relevance that we documented, we felt that they were really good and a basis, good basis for us uh, within the wash sector in the, green, in the green space to actually promote businesses within the space. We also looked at and found that there are very interesting uh, institutional arrangement also in the space uh, from government to private sector, civil society, the academia, and of course, development partners. These are st st stakeholders operating in the space with the, the ministries providing the, the, the guidance and legal framework for the operation of all the policies that I've talked about. Ministry of Finance providing funding, uh, Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources with its two main uh, directorate, the Water Directorate and then the Environmental Directorate providing very strong opportunity and space in the enabling environment for civil society to operate, as well as for development partners to also invest funding and trainings in the sector. Of course, the MMDAs are the core at the core at the grassroots level with the responsibility of you know environmental sanitation and all the like. So in, in, in brief, we found this, you know, as the institutional arrangement in the space of the sector. Because of our focus around market-oriented approach and getting entrepreneurs and, and stimulating them, the economy, we, we also needed to ask ourselves whether there are, uh, what are the market and non-market environment within the space that uh, a typical firm or a typical entrepreneur 
within the MSME is confronted with. And so you would find that in your short, the company or the firm or whatever you can talk about being there, where we, we did get within the market environment of these, we have the competitors, there are other uh, bigger, smaller enterprises also within the same space competing and also doing the same stuff. We have suppliers, we have customers, and then of course the others that are within the immediate uh, market space of the company. There are other non-market space also and market non-market actors who also play a very important role and can make and make actually the, the firms that are working within the sector. So the regulators are key, government agencies, the MMDAs, the ministry, the, all those that give their uh, accreditations and all that. Citizens who are not really the immediate uh, customers of, of the firms, but of course can be, be, be co-opted into. There are also the media. And, and, and Alex talked about how do we deal with perception? It's all within this non-market environment that we would need to identify and we identify as uh, stakeholders that we need to work closely with if we want to actually uh, progress or uh, make the worst sector a viable uh, uh, sector for youth and others to be attracted to. Again, we found out that the operations of MSMEs have not been easy. And so we, we, one of the main points that we got was the fact that most of them, particularly the micro and the smaller ones, are actually using very old tools, obsolete tools and technologies in actually delivering the services that they are delivering for us. Uh, and the reasons for which they, they are using these tools were many, and we captured that the issue of access to capital was one of the major uh, constraints for these uh, companies or MSMEs in this sector for them to adopt technologies. Banking services are not provided also because of the perception. There's that perception of debt, I should say, if you are talking about sanitation and baller stuff. There's that perception around that. And so it's not attracting the youth in there. It's not also making gov uh, the banking sector to see it as an attractive uh, sector that they can go in. And then also, also because of the, the, the administrative systems of the MSMEs operating because they are not keeping proper books and all that. And so it's not really attractive also for the banking sector. The skills that they need also, skilled labor is also a major concern also for the sector, particularly within the, the, the medium, small companies you know, where transferable skills and technical skills can be done. And I know very well that we know as sector players that poor enf enforcement also has been one of the major banks for us when it comes to uh, uh, regulation, implementing regulations and all that in Ghana. At the macro environment also for the others that would even cross the line of being quite attractive, they are also confronted with high interest rate issues and also our currencies, our currency depreciation also is causing them not to be able to buy technology from outside the country also to use. So the resultant the effect has been limited cash flow for this. And so the virtual cycle of poverty uh, of not being able to grow actually continues because there's limited cash flow. There's limited technology because they are not able to secure enough funding to acquire the needed technology for efficiency and also for them to grow. So these are the things that we found as the, 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 the operational barriers for MSMEs working within uh, the sector. Again, we asked ourselves whether there are supporting mechanisms available for the MSMEs also within the space. We found two streams and where we, the, there are the non-financial mechanisms and then the financial mechanisms. So for financial mechanisms, we're talking about tax incentives, we're talking about uh, innovative financing, for both startups and of course also for uh, capital injection for existing uh, firms as well. For the non-financial uh, mechanism also, we realize that of course, I've mentioned about the policies. We have a lot and a lot of policies and regulations that actually are favorable for the operations of MSMEs. There is also the vibrant associations. I can think of Coniwas, I can think of the recycling association. All these are associations that are available within the space and pushing the interests of eight members along the line. Training, support, and incubation also are available within the states. I'll pick these things one after the other and go into it. So in terms of innovative financing opportunities, 
One that you can think of quickly is the NBSSI loans, uh, which it's offered around 5% for startups, you know, and other businesses that are within one, two, three years, we found this. We also found that there are microfinance and microcredit uh, facilities also within the sector. One is the Fidelity P2P loans. We have the HFC Bois for and, uh, and all that also within the sector. And there are also equity financing available within the sector as well for individuals that actually also put those things. For tax incentives, we also found that there are a number of tax holidays uh, available also within the sector. For example, if you're a young entrepreneur, uh, up to 35 years, between 18, 15 to 35 years, and you are located in any of the regions. Our interest was in the Western region, Ashanti region, but of course, it applies for other regions as well, except in the three northern regions that is a bit higher than the 12.5%. You have a rebate of 12.5% of your 35% uh, uh, income stuff. If you are outside the regional capitals, then you are looking at around 10% rebate, which is quite good. And specifically, if we are looking also for waste reprocessing, uh, polythene, plastic, and all that, there is also the seven-year tax holiday for such people to work in. Those that are also within cocoa products, byproducts also, it's around five years tax holidays with a reduce of 1% and all that, which is quite a good incentive for the operation of uh, the sector. Again, training and uh, support mechanisms for startups and even businesses working within the, the space. Again, from the government side, there, there's the National Board for NBSSI is provided that opportunity. The National Entrepreneurship and Innovation Plan also NEP is also providing that opportunity within the government initiative as well. And more than I'm sure you would actually also suggest for us to include. For private sector and the uh, incubators in Ghana, the Ghana Innovation Hub also is providing startup uh, trainings and all that for for, for my MSMEs within the space, uh, Kumasi Hives, NBU, uh, No Business As Usual, uh, funded by uh, SOS, ICODE, uh, and then there's also the Ghana Startup uh, Capital Fund as well. In terms of international incubators also, we found that the toilet uh, board coalition is also playing a very key role when it comes to incubation at that level. Aqua for all, water for all, water, uh, water premiers and the young water uh, solutions are all uh, incubators that are uh, providing services at the international level as well. How are they connected? We talked about the association for the non-financial uh, mechanisms. So the association of plastic recyclers, very strong are there. The association of contract cleaners also available. AGI uh, also playing a very important role. ESPA, we all know ESPA very well. The Private Water Tanker Owners Association also the Water Board Coalition is also there. And of course, Konoas also playing a very important role uh, in terms of policy and supporting its members. So, so these are associations that we found. And again, I'm sure you would mention more for us to also include as well. But are there businesses, are they very good businesses within the se sector that, again, we also will be interested in as well? Yes, so we found a number, a couple of them. For solid waste, we found that recycling to compost uh, in terms of briquettes is, is a clear opportunity. Plastic, paper, uh, metal, upscale, and recycling also is a very important opportunity. Abattoir waste into feed. A uh, need eco model is a very good model for uh, converting uh, abattoir waste into feed for, for, for poultry which is also very good uh, and is thriving very well. Collection and, and, and transportation also is a very good business opportunity. Recycling of the waste as well. For solid, for water, waste, liquid, uh, liquid uh, waste, and then fecal sludge. Of course, the sludge to fuel brigades, it's also one uh, opportunity that is thriving in Ghana and in the two regions that we, 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 we are working in and we found. Slot to compost, also I've talked about that as well. For toilet facilities, of course, we are promoting the use of toilets and so toilet seats or toilet facilities. So the design, manufacturing and marketing, marketing, they are a very good opportunity for jobs also. Rental of mobile toilets, very good opportunity and I'm sure we are very abreast with these. Within the hygiene service subsector, COVID also has also 
uh, created quite a very extensive job opportunity within the production and marketing of hand sanitizers and soap, uh, production of marketing also of uh, solar powered Veronica bucket or, or, or leg paddled uh, uh, bucket as well, whichever way it is. Genitorial services, of course, laundry services and hand wipes. These are also very uh, lucrative business opportunities in this era that we find ourselves. For financial services within the micro and meso credit bit, for those of us manufacturing hardware, of course, there's opportunity for funding, particularly from the financial sector point of view, where those who are into transportation, the toilet builders, and then of course, the opportunity for mobile systems, uh, payment system also present itself when it comes to uh, the financial sector in terms of business opportunities that we found. Again, we're thinking whether uh, to further research around how viable um, it is also for the sector players or the MSMEs within this. So we went back to SMB P2P uh, survey that uh, a research they did on market segmentation and found out that uh, the MSMEs operating in this uh, sector, some have been in existence for uh, over nine years. And then some also, in terms of the small companies, have been for over eight years. And so it shows that these businesses are very good, and that's why people are in there. And if you look at the average turnover uh, on your screen, you would realize that for those working within the water monthly, they are earning about 2,400 cities, about 2,400 cities. Uh, those in the sanitation sector, about over 3,000 as well. And so it, it, it gives us a signal that, yes, these are businesses that are really paying and they are lucrative if we can repackage it or package it well for it to be more attractive for the youth and others. It would serve good. Again, we also wanted to see how the households are also adopting the, the toilet facilities and for others. We, we found very quite interesting around expenditure, average expenditure of 22 cities, 32 cities a month on, on, on the use of just toilet alone and the others that you can also think of. SNV is also looking at building capacity. And so later in the presentation, I'll tell you more about it. And so we needed also to understand as a market uh, scan, to understand what are the skill set gaps? What are we up for? What would, do we deal with when we begin to go full board in the implementation? And we found out that generally the administrative systems of the MSMEs are a bit deficient. So in terms of uh, bookkeeping, in terms of proposals and how to run operationalize their system, there is some bit of a challenge with it that we need to deal with. Occupational safety and health issues are also very important that we have to tackle. Otherwise, these people would can't get infected and all that. So we need to, we, we found out that it is a major skill gap that would have to be dealt with. Client relationship management also, we found that the soft part, the soft skill that uh, those within the sector should have around marketing, around all that, we found that these things are also lacking and we need to work on it. Financial controls also around uh, financial literacy, how to make money, save money, and reinvest money is a major concern. Like I mentioned about uh, limited cash flow. How do we even manage the limited cash flow we have in order to grow our businesses? Market intelligence around who to target and what to do again, also became another major point that we also found as a skill gap. We also found, lastly, issues of standardization. And it's linked to sustaining your facility. How you design the system would make it sustain, sustainable. Are, we, are they actually meeting the standards established by the protocols? For example, construction of a toilet or any other uh, uh, also for transfer stations that we are supposed to work with. So these were the set, skill, skill sets gaps that we found during our market uh, scan analysis. So we, we also try to look out for, within the context, like Beatrice said, 
because we are working within the green space. What are the green value chain enterprise solutions available now within the regions that we can actually promote? So we, we found some. And then what I'm going to present to you, we, we just categorize them around water, as in water. And then we also look at sanitation, as in pool. I mean, toilet sanitation. And then we also looked at it from the environmental bit of sanitation. So you have these three components of, uh, should I say, a sub, mini subsectors within the value chain that I would uh, present to you. So this actually is adopted from the WASUP uh, concept uh, around sanitation business model, which I'm sure we are very much familiar around. And so there are so much to get from sanitation in terms of toilet around employment, around creating, stimulating the, uh, uh, the economy, local economy for, for money to flow. From, from the design stage, the pre-purchase stage, to the purchase stage, and then also the maintenance, and that is the post-usage also stage, very important. The financial sector also plays a very important role when it comes to this in two levels. One, by providing financing opportunity for actually companies who are green manufacturing and supply, and then also for consumers like us who want to buy toilets or who wants to use the services of, you know, uh, uh, those who put toilet and all that. So basically, if you look at this, this is where the things that we, we picked and realized and identified that there are several opportunity when it comes to job here as well. For water, again, just like the model that uh, has been promulgated by a lot, uh, so Bridgeway Consult also has developed this model as well, where we're looking also around, uh, we found the production bit. So this is typically for a peri-urban area. So where we know very well that the water supply uh, provision in Ghana is done by either Ghana Water Company or the Community Water uh, Agency. And so for areas that Ghana Water Company operates, of course, that one at the urban level, yes, we have not really thought of how that would work. But of course, it's possible when we are talking about it from a bulk kiosk approach, which I has been tested somehow uh, before. The other bit also is looking at the CWSA concept. And so it is more designed to fit in within the peri-urban and then the rural kind of setting if we want to uh, really provide the jobs. But what is important is what is under the, the boxes, where we are very familiar with the fact that unreliable water supply uh, there are a lot of unreliable water supply within these areas because of O and M issues. Uh, also because our WSMTs are not that vibrant. And so for us to make it a business, then we need to have it really in this system where there is a system administrator, where there's a billing and water reading officers, revenue collectors, and of course the plumbers that would be stationed to ensure the regular services of the, the water systems and all that. So that within the, the production system, you can actually have about more than six, seven uh, youth actually employed for the delivery of sustainable water. The other bit is where the storage comes in. The distribution bit is also where vendors actually can be recruited at the water point. And, you know, averagely around two, three people at the water point, one as a hygiene person, one as the one selling and all that, and a mechanic to also support the, in, the repairs also comes in as well. And I talked about the bulk uh, cluster kiosk uh, systems at, at marketplaces, which again, Ghana Water Company can also explore that opportunity if the pipes connections are not at these places. For usage, of course, the plumbers and the gangs of people that can come together and then also service the, the, the area also is very critical. But also for us, the focus is on the fact that in, 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 in promoting water, we have limited our promotional activities around usage, drinking, drinking, bathing, and all that. But we have done less when it comes to linking water to livelihood. And so for us, we want to link water to livelihood so that people will then see that it is clearly linked to the livelihood that I mentioned earlier around. And one model that I know of is the aquaculture linked to irrigation uh, and horticulture, which provides the secular economy system that SMB is also looking at, and the Green Project is looking at. 
that project actually uh, is looking at the multiple uses of water around using it for drinking at the same time for agriculture and then for fish production and then also the waste water which is not waste is recycled back into the field with very minimal uh, uh, waste on that so basically that is also for water that we have identified in terms of environmental sanitation i am very sure you are very familiar with meta scrap dealers so it's also an area that can take off those waste from the environment. And so you find um, in the yellow document down there, and again, this is coming from global communities as part of their uh, sanitation marketing approach and how they see it. And these are things that are actually happening also in the two regions that we're working in, in Ghana as a whole. And so you find, you find hundreds of value pickers within, within the system. And we can actually build the capacity of these value pickers create centers where uh, it will be a convergence point for people to come in and, and, and provide services in terms of bringing in the metals and then it is well packaged, clean, and then sent to dealers. That then will be sent for scrap dealers for export. They are in the 10,000, thousands. And annually, it's estimated that over 7,000 uh, metal scraps are actually exported into uh, Overseas, So that also provides a very good opportunity for the youth to go in the help us take off the metal scraps, the ferrous metal scrap from the system. At the same time, make them earn very decent uh, incomes from this as well. For e-waste, which we are very familiar with, if you go to Abuboshi, you see the kind of burning that happens there. Again, also that we, the value pickers are in their thousands. Uh, the dealers are in their hundreds, and we, it's estimated also that over over 10 tons of such uh, electric waste actually is also used locally for those of us within the ICT uh, sector when they buy them, and also for repairing of of, of uh, repairing shops and all that. In terms of export, also uh, it's also done as well, and so this also provides quite a very good opportunity because over not less than 8,000 tons of, of, of e-waste is also generated household level, commercial, and then also industrial source as well. Again, this is what also present. And they are happening also in the regions that we, we, we found, and we, it's a, quite a good opportunity to build this as well. Plastic waste also, and so plastic pallet value chain also comes in mind, where we want to take off uh, sachet water from our system. And of course, the producers are the source of this, street littering, household level, restaurants, and then public beans, you find these plastics there. Uh, we have over hundreds of value pickers also in there. How do we build them, their capacity around occupational safety and hazards to be able to pick these things and then put them at centers that can be bought by middlemen and then to the converters of uh, pallet, uh, shred them, and actually give it out to domestic recycling uh, companies and upcycling companies. And some are shipped when it is uh, palleted and others are also used internally for dustbins and all that. So it also provides, again, for us, a very good opportunity for us to further enhance and develop these uh, subsectors as well. One, I think last I want to talk about is the ties, the vehicle ties. And when you go to Ashama, when you are coming to from Accra, you are entering Ashama and other places, Aboboshi and all that, you find the youth actually burning ties just for the metal you can see on your extreme right. So is there still metal that they want? And so is it possible, again, for us to have centers that these things can be uh, removed safely so that the steel dealers can have access to this steel that they want? The youth are able to make decent income and at the same time they rip off the used ties from our street. The other thing and uh, the other big business also around this is the, the Helderberg cement in Togo that actually need, is in need of these uh, ties. And so how do we work around this so that when they take the metal, this, uh, the, the ties can then be conveyed through, again, the Hildeberg cement trucks to Togo because they bring cement and then they, they'll send the, the ties away. So it also provides opportunity for them also to use it actually to burn 
the ties to supplement the fuel that they use at their factory. So we, we also looked at whether there are private sector financing opportunities available be, besides the, the public one I mentioned. And we found that the Snap Yaba wash loans, it's also available. Uh, they started about five years ago uh, with about 30 million and it's still running. The Smart V wash credit scheme, though it's not in the two regions, but of course, these are very uh, innovative uh, schemes that can, of course, extend to Ashanti region or Western region because of how innovative they are. Save Water Network model is a model that also has been tested uh, and operates within the peri urban, just like what I showed you. Very interesting model. They are actually entering Ashanti region. Or, no, they are actually in Ashanti region, but entering in Western region. Of course, it is an opportunity for us to further develop this model uh, as well and work with Safe uh, Water in a way to finance this as well. The Clean Team Ghana also model is also good where, uh, I mean, it's a social enterprise that provides safe, affordable uh, toilet facilities for low-income communities, of course, at a fee. But of course, you pay in small, 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 pay small, small, that they call it, weekly for you to have access to this as well. UNICEF also launched uh, the Basic Sanitation Fund and handled by APES. Currently, I'm told that they are um, assessing how the impact of the fund is. It's in whole uh, Tamale Ashama. And of course, hopefully we could also, uh, after the assessment, hear maybe what would happen, whether we can get some in Ashanti region or not. But the last bit also is our own, SMB's own funded uh, project with uh, also the Dutch embassy, the P2P, uh, which is also working with Fidelity, I've mentioned, and providing very innovative um, financing options for the subsector, which is quite good. So what do we have to offer as a green project? So green project, like Beatrice said, we, have, we are working in, in SMV. We have two main resort areas, so two and four. And so for resort two, we would be working with a tried, tested model called the OE model, the opportunities for SMV opportunities for youth employment model. This model is unique. Uh, it's, 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 it's a model that looks just beyond the, the traditional way that we are used to when it comes to employment promotion uh, in Africa. So it goes just beyond that by looking at an integrated approach and it's built on SMV's 50 years experience when it comes to uh, market and value chain development. And so we have really an extended uh, approach that would provide employability and entrepreneurship skills for 5,000 youth in the two regions that we have talked about. So the push angle actually provides the opportunity and build the skills, the needed skills that the sector needs, so the, the, the market needs, you know. So in the simple terms, I always say that I, I try to use a simple economics term. We, we all are very familiar with the demand supply uh, concept in economics. So I always use that as, as an example. And so the push provides that, that, that supply scale that the industry needs, you know, in terms of labor to then use and operate and produce results. So basically that's how it is. So, so for us, within the push angle, you are offered or you are exposed to all the skills that you need, both technical and soft skills that you need in order to be market relevant uh, in the space that you want to work in, both as somebody looking for a job or somebody who wants to build an entrepreneurship empire. So that is how it is. The match bit actually is like the demand and supply where they intersect. So, how do we bring you closer to what you are asking for? So access to finance is a major one and that is where we can bridge and, and expose you to opportunities within the sector. We also have the market scans that we are doing now. So we then identify the issues. They're a bit also around internships. So you are offered internships where you are actually coached and taken through the, the nitty gritties of what you want to do 
in order for you to be relevant within the market space. So you can be transited safely from the word of uh, wherever you are coming from, whether in a school environment or not school environment, to the word of work. So it is very important. The push part, the pull part is the demand base. So that is where the industry wants you. So that is, are you ready for me to pitch you? Are you ready for me to use you? So that is that opportunity that the market system also provides. So uh, your business as, as, a, as, as a, a baller something, are you able to supply what the, in the, the people want in terms, the market want in terms of number of toilet facilities? Are you able to communicate, market your product to the market within that space? And we don't leave you there when uh, we, we build your capacity. We actually handhold you and ensure that we coach, mentor you, so we don't leave you like the others that will leave you along the way. So basically, that is it for the employability bit of it. So within the employability bit, I have talked about the fact that we will be giving demand-driven employability trainings and entrepreneurship is demand-driven. We would also establish a web-based platform that uh, almost, or we will be almost done with that. Uh, the concepts are almost done with that, where we will be linking market, we're providing market opportunities, business to business opportunities, intensive platforms. You can go in there and market your products and all the things for free, at least for you to be exposed within the push bed, the match and push bed. We would also provide practical solutions within the specific value chain. So it's not just talking about, oh, uh, like I presented like that way, but we are going to provide you in a shanty region who. Uh, which actors are operating within the converters of plastics into pallets. So that when you, you are a value picker, you know that if I go to a Swansea number one, for example, that is where the, the, the converter is. So you have a clear understanding, practical solution to your market needs. So that is what we would offer also for the market. We would again provide live, live market information with the market scans that we do, we do yearly market scans with actual information and, and places that you can go to. Networking and exchanging, of course, would be one of the things. We would also create a business plan competition where you would come in as an entrepreneur and then pitch your idea. And if you're able to impress us, we will then also be awarded with some cash as well as also support in order to further develop your, your business plan. For result four, we're looking at incubation and acceleration. So we are accelerating and incubating uh, SMEs within the sector also as well. We would not be dealing with very fresh ideas under this. The fresh ideas would come under the first one I talked about. But these are businesses that are already there and they are either at the, at the pre-income uh, pre uh, revenue stage so we can incubate them to go through that process. You can see there the incubation bed. And others who would be incubated not, you know, would also go into acceleration those that will go into acceleration are also businesses that are already established and want to either, you know, seek capital injection or any other support that will come in. That also would go into that as well. So incubation, acceleration, again, like I said, we would strengthen the hubs that are available in the country or the two regions, actually, to incubate and accelerate uh, SMEs. We would also emphasize on accelerating SMEs. We would also support crowdfunding opportunities, support them to crowd funding opportunity. The crowdfunding would be handled by UNCDF in the Resolve 3. And so they, we, they have actually um, built a crowdfunding platform where SMEs, MSMEs would pitch on it actually to attract funding grants from the diaspora, which would be as part of the package that we are also offering under the green uh, project. I talked about the exchange market research. Of course, we would have uh, business corners also as well. The challenge fund, again, is also another opportunity where uh, you would also pitch your idea as an MSME, and of course, you will be awarded with cash to either inject into your business or to support whatever you are doing. But of course, it is a matching grant. And so you should be able to, if you're asking for 2,000, you should be able to bring 1,000 CDs so that we match it and all that. So that is what it is also for the support that we provide. So in wrapping up, these are the questions that we want us. We want you to help us answer whether we have considered the right subsectors, uh, whether you think that there are additional or any other subsector that you think that can provide us with the job and enterprise opportunities within the subsector space. How do we? It's very important. Deal with perception. 
towards green wash businesses, particularly for the youth and women to come into that. And then uh, Coniwas and, and the other platforms, what role differently can you do for us, not for us, I mean for the sector, in order for us to promote market-based approach to wash delivery? On that note, Alex, I think I, I, I am done. Thank you. Um, so I will thank you very uh, much. go back. Okay. Thank you very much, Enoch, for this very insightful presentation. I mean, it's, uh, it's a lot of information that you've given to all of us. I mean, really going, going through this, what is clear is that, you know, the, the project is, is quite informed on what the, the opportunities are for, for startup and for employment creation in the, in the, in the wash sector. What is left, you know, as, as the question suggests, is to kind of get feedback from players within the sector, both within the public and the private sector, and to have an idea of, you know, what they also think in terms of what the opportunities are, what the challenges are, what new ideas. And then essentially these four questions, if they have any perspectives. So, you know, I would, I would, we are now at a Q and A session. There is a raise a hand feature that you can use, and once you raise your hand, we would invite you to to ask your question, and your mic would be muted. So we we invite all of you to we invite all of you to to come on and. And start asking, you know, whatever questions you may you may have. Um, so the floor the floor is open now. Okay. So we can begin with. So there's a queer answer, Ishan. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, uh, yes, um, I was getting confused halfway through the uh, presentation when reference was only being made to the Ashanti region. Is the Western region not part of this sector of the uh, um, of the program of the of the project? <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, Enoch will respond to that. Um, is there another hand up? Please respond to that. Hello, Enoch. Yeah, okay, so uh, maybe pardon me, Ikea, for it, but uh, it's happening in Western and Ashanti regions. I, I think I'll just. Uh, for convenience, I was just using uh, Shanti region, but not really uh, the focus. Uh, it's in the two regions. So sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you very much for the clarification. So the next two questions will be coming from Yusuf and Jesse, but I'll begin with Yusuf. Yusuf, please. Hello. Hello, Yusuf. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Nice. Um, I've, been the, I've been following the presentation skill and I'm really impressed with the work you've done so far. Uh, but the question that I have is so far, what do you intend to do regarding uh, the, the market based approach? I would like to know the experience of uh, SNG as far as the market based approach is concerned so far. And uh, probably maybe I may not have uh, heard from the presentation, but the, the agriculture aspect that was presented last week. So, Hello? Hello? Hello, Yusuf, please continue. Okay, okay. I'll, I'm making a reference 
with the last presentation on the agricultural sector, there was a presentation made about the fish value chain. And I see a clear link between water and the market approach as far as uh, wash is concerned, especially on water. So I just want to establish the link between that for me. Thank you. Thank you, you Steve. Okay, so we we'll take the next the next question from from Jesse. Okay, thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Enoch. It, it's a very good presentation. Uh -huh. Can you hear me? Can you hear you, Jesse? Okay. So I say it's an exciting presentation. Uh, I just want to say that as we, look, as we look at the business side of the green project, it should not be the link from the impact that it could have possibly have on the ecosystem. For instance, I saw in the presentation you talking about uh, dealing with ferrous ions and some other byproducts that can be managed. Well. Uh, it is important that we look at the technology side. Because at the same time that we are dealing with the ferrous ion, if we are not careful, we could also be introducing ferrous ion into our water bodies. We can also get into the groundwater. So just to say that you need to match uh, all these things that you are doing with a, a technology base that at the same time we are not just looking at the profit side, but we are indeed uh, interlinking them and correlating the, the whole thing. That doesn't have any other adverse effect on the environment. Thank you and over. Thank you very much, um, Jesse. So um, I think Enoch, I'll, I'll throw all the three questions to you. The first two from Yusuf. He wanted to know what the experience of SMV is on the, on the market-based approach and how we intend to integrate that in, in the project. The second one, you know, he wants, you know, I think just a comment on, on the link between the wash and agri sector because there is definitely opportunities to to bring the two together. And then Jesse's question on what we what we would be doing to manage, you know, any negative environmental impacts. All right. Uh, thank you so so much. I, I will start from uh, my only Oga Oga Jesse. You know, he knows why we call him Oga. Uh, so yes, uh, well noted with with uh, the suggestion. Uh, however, we will not really go into uh, that. But what we are thinking is to help rid of such uh, materials in the system. And so those that are already taking those various metals, how do we help them? Say that we we build their uh, capacity around so uh, health and safety and all that. So they can really pick these things in a more sustainable and not affect their health uh, system. So that's where we're going. So we would provide that support for them to do that. And at the same time, also ensure that they are also making some income, very decent income uh, out of that. So that is it. But well noted on, on the feedback around uh, the environmental, uh, possible environmental impact also that we can also get from this. So thanks so much uh, for that. The UCF point around our experience around market-based approach, SMB for over 50 years, as I mentioned, has, has really developed that, that experience globally and also in, in, as, as a country for our 28 years, we've worked within the market system. So we understand the market and we, we, we have very well established uh, systems uh, from the agri sector to energy and then also uh, wash sector. What is unique about the green is the, the combination of the two, the three. And so we are bringing all this expertise under the, uh, the green project in order to deliver very sustainable market-based uh, approach uh, in, in, with, with this program. So that, that is the bit. For the linkage with water and sanitation, very perfect. Uh, just because we are presenting it separately, otherwise, 
uh, like the, you listen to the Greek, is talk, they talked about this. And when I also was presenting, I mentioned linking water to livelihoods and cited the example of the aquaculture uh, system where it uses water for aquaculture and also for horticulture or rice production. So that clearly provides the linkage at that side. For renewable energy, I talked also about solar powered Veronica bucket, which also brings about the two also together. So it is an integrated approach that the green would be delivering. I hope that I have been able to answer these questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Enoch. Um, we'll move on to the next set of questions. We'll begin with Stephen, Stephen and Oliver. So Stephen um, could, could go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, okay. Uh, I hope I understand the fourth uh, question. What role can platforms and NGO play in promoting market based and whatever? Um, it's just a business idea. I don't know whether this is the right platform, but let me just put it forward. You see, if uh, we are able to assist the state or the government to identify how much it spends uh, in a particular district or uh, municipality uh, due to the insanitary conditions and the unavailability of water, then uh, we can strike an MOU. Uh, I'm going to make investments in this district to bring the, uh, up the sanitary conditions there so that your expenditure in that district goes down by, say, 30%. And I need... 5% of that your 30% uh, uh, to be given to me as some kind of motivation or something like that. I don't know whether that can fly to, uh, so that we can target districts, uh, look at what is causing, get the health statistics there and everything, and use that to uh, uh, justify a project. Probably get invest some funds somewhere, build some toilets if that is what we think is causing some issues there, get uh, water boreholes there, and uh, we have some indicators, strike it down, and then get something out of it. I mean, this is what I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen. Um, I think the next person is Oliver. Uh, this is Oliver. Uh, Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. We are, we are a team here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Okay, so uh, just to uh, thank you for the nice presentation, even though uh, we joined a little bit late. Uh, uh, mine is just to ask whether we'll, we'll be able to get this presentation uh, later for, for more in depth. You know, of the the, uh, the project and what has been done so far. Um, so that we can also do, uh, do uh, in the next future if we have you more contribution to make. Um, then, yeah, then our second question is, uh, uh, this is Patrick, we are together uh, in one location. Our second question is, uh, in the sanitation business models, did you come across one practical business case involving biogas and compost that are earning an average uh, that you shared earlier in the sanitation business models? Um, Oliver, there is a noise in the, in oh, really? the background. You, could you please repeat your question? In the sanitation business models, mm -hmm. across a practical business uh, involving biogas or composting, that was also earning to the average uh, turnover that you shared. I think an average turnover of uh, between 2,000 to 3,000 per month. Did you come across any business related yeah. to biogas or oh. composting that was also uh, on the ground working well? Okay, thank you. 
thank you very much. Um, I think there, there was a question on whether the presentation would be would be shared. Um, that that was from Oliver. So the simple answer is yes. We will share both the recording of the webinar and the and the presentation, and the the link to both will be shared with all participants. I would now move on to Enoch on the questions that have come. There was a question from Stephen on, I think, a comment on, on the business idea, yes. And then a question also on if there is a practical, if we came across a practical approach of biogas um, or composting in that, that dispooling similar turnover, like the one we showed from SMV research. No? Yes, so um, the comment was good, uh, and I think that we can uh, together explore how best uh, we can work around this uh, with government and see how viable that could be. Otherwise, it's quite good. The other point also is the business model and, and, and whether we found anything, not on biogas, but on compost that we found uh, in Western region, actually. So that was ending close to 3,000, I should say, uh, a month. So that we found. But of course, if, if you also know of any model around that, around, particularly with biogas, uh, it would be very interesting. Uh, it would be interesting for us to learn and also get it uh, promoted. So please kindly get in touch with us uh, to promote that as well, if you know of any such uh, model. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Enoch. So we'll take um, a few more questions. So the, the next set of questions will be coming from Domitian Mabula and Lovance Owusu Techi. So Domitian Mabula could start. Please unmute, unmute the mic. Hello. 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 Yeah, Domitian. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, thank you for the nice presentation. And um, for me, I have two concerns. But again, uh, congratulations for what you have been doing. It seems great. But my concern, my first concern is that. Um, the way I see is like uh, the project is like pushing it, everything. Do, do, do those are like, uh, those are, I mean, other players in the value chain, are they seeing the incentive of working with it, the, the particular value chain? The way I see is like uh, maybe perhaps at the end of the project, they also meet also yeah, straight. Mm. That's the first thing. The second thing is about um, the technology. I think someone also talked about it, like these pickers. Uh, you are talking about maybe picking the plastic, picking about the, um, the ions and something like that. Perhaps maybe they may, also, they may also influence these pickers to destroy the infrastructure. For instance, if you are using to build uh, water and sanitation in plastic, all these uh, um, pipes, how are they going not to contradict the interest of the, of the public by picking maybe plastics and iron and like that way? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next person, Lovance Owusu Techi. Yes, uh, good, uh, good afternoon to you all. And thank you very much for the brilliant presentation, Enoch. I think uh, I would like to just comment on the points uh, that I have that is on the board on the webinar. Um, it's brilliant, and I think that most of the wash subsectors have been considered. Um, my name is Lovans, I'm from the director for the Institute for Sustainable Energy and Environmental Solutions. And uh, on the additional subsectors that can be useful, I think that uh, we only looked at the hardware, but I didn't hear much of the software. Uh, mobile and web applications to facilitate access is one of the things that I think that we should keep people and helping the youth who 
who are developing mobile and web applications to facilitate access to energy, water, and sanitation services. Uh, I want to know whether that would also be considered and supported under the project. Uh, also, in dealing with the perception uh, uh, of uh, an attitude towards green projects, I think that one of the uh, most be higher benefits that this project will bring is how um, the market or the general public would accept and be willing to pay for uh, green projects. Normally, if you say this charcoal is from toilet or from, you know, nobody will want to buy. You, for biogas, perception on biogas for cooking, people would not want to buy because they want LPG uh, instead of how do I use toilet for cooking and that kind of thing. So I think that um, it's, it's an important uh, project that we, that we, the Institute is partnering with the Sustainability Hub to, we have introduced a program called Sustainability Media. And this program is supposed to showcase and highlight uh, innovative technologies and entrepreneurs within the green, uh, green space so that Hello. Yeah, I think I think we've we've lost Lovance. Uh, so Enoch, I think you can you can come in when he comes. He would have the yeah. opportunity to. Okay. To so thanks. I, I think I will be quite quick uh, on this. Uh, the 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 point uh, around pushing everything. I think you are right. So one of the things we want to do is to narrow actually to about six or less subsectors that we can promote for the first two years of that program so that we don't uh, actually touch everything and at the end of the day, we are not doing anything. So that is well uh, taken and uh, noted. The other bit of getting value pickers, picking things that are, not, are supposed to be picked, yes, that is actually what is happening now. And so for those that are doing it, they, when they move around and they see it, you just pick it and just go around because it gives them money. And so we want to give that decency around that and so that people can even they themselves can offer such uh, uh metals to people without that so that awareness and that support will be provided otherwise actually that is what is happening now they pick things that they are not supposed to be picked things that are supposed to be used for they are really use, usable that's what they pick so that is also noted and that's where we're going to get to on lovan's point i think that the suggestions were good uh, around the mobile web uh, application for access. I think for us, what is important for us is that it's an innovation or a, a product that would help preserve and conserve the environment. So if it falls within this preservation and conserving the environment and not uh, impacting negatively on the environment, I think it's something that we could look at, provided that it is an innovative approach around access. And there are a number of them, like you talked about as Mobility Hub, I've seen one that actually uh, close, uh, it's, it's like a dustbin. It, it closes off completely when the thing is full and will reject uh, when you put in uh, uh, you know, non-plastic stuff. You know, so these are things that, of course, uh, are controlled by these stuff. So definitely, yes, it could be considered uh, as well. Yeah, I think that that's it for the okay. questions that he asked. But of course, okay. we'll further well, engage the institu institute also to learn more about the, the sustainability media and how we can also uh, leverage on that platform as well. So definitely we would get in touch with Lovance as well. Okay, thank you very much, Enoch. Um, so we, we, we will move over to the question that people have posted in the Q&A forum. But you know, just to, to also add a little bit on, on, on the focus of the project, you know, I think there was a point about pushing everything. So in addition to, to this validation workshop, we'll also have a multi-stakeholder regional level validation in the two regions. And in those two regions, we will be able to, to, to pin down and, and select the specific subsectors together with the stakeholders that we want to, we want to focus on. And we will be doing that from, from next week. So by the time we are done with all of these validations, but importantly, the regional level, would have you know a much a much sharper focus on what we want to specifically 
focus on. From the Q&A questions, there, there's a question from Destina. Destina, the question is, are there any consideration of the EPA in the process, especially certain e-waste business? Any consideration for, for watershed management? So this is more the role of the public sector or collaboration with the public sector, but more specifically EPA. You know, so there's a, there's a question about collaboration with EPA. And then there's a question from Esther Mensah. Since one of the major problems that rural communities face is the continuous breakdown of water facilities. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, uh, I think I've lost it. Okay, but you can begin with the first one on collaboration with EPA. You know? Yes, yeah, so for collaboration, yes, we are collaborating with all the state uh, institutions around regulation as well. Uh, if you look at our advanced model for entrepreneurship, uh, there's a session that will deal with how to operate your business. And so you'll be exposed to the regulatory uh, systems and protocols in Ghana from EPA to all the things that you can think of within the framework that we work with. Yes, definitely, uh, they will be, and we would from time to time invite them also to sit in, in our peer-to-peer -peer exchange programs as well. So yes, there, there is uh, that also. We are also working around MOUs with these, some of these state institutions as well. Uh, we have started with N, 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 uh, BS, NBSSI. We are also working with the Ministry of uh, Employment and the rest also would follow. Watershed, yes. Uh, it's an area we'll be interested also in and go in. Our interest around watershed and also around vegetation and all that. Uh, is looking at working with groups. So if, if, if it's like we have youth groups, gangs, that can you know, team up to work around that. Of course, uh, we, we SMV cannot do that alone. And so we would also seek private and other public institutions to support us in, in working together in order to really do this. So of course, if there are ideas around that area, you can also let us know and then we can then pick the conversation uh, from there, provided it's within the Western and Ashanti regions. We are good to go with that. So, uh, Destina, we are open for any partnership. If you, yeah, you have any that you think of, we can work together around it successfully. Thank you on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I now have Estherine's um, full comment. So, Estherine, one of the major problem that rural communities face is the continuous breakdown of water facilities. So she is therefore recommending that we look at the platform to look at what the platform and NGOs can do in this area to support youth and women to establish input shops at the district level. Mm -hmm. So that is from Esther. Okay. So that is, um, I think that is a suggestion but if yeah. you want to comment on that you know no that's fine i think it's it's you know i mentioned that operation and maintenance is one major concern when it comes to uh, managing water systems and so yes it's an area that uh, she's brought that we can also keep an eye on and then promote also which is very 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 good yeah okay there's the question about collaboration. So how does institutions collaborate with the project? Will there be a call for registering with the, with the project? How do institutions collaborate with the project? Will there be a call for registering with the project? Um, for this, you know, before you come in, I will let, I think Genevieve um, could, could start. Genevieve, how would we collaborate with institutions from the SME side? Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. Um, so we are putting out an expression of interest for service providers. Um, it should be out, I think, by close of week. Um, otherwise, other institutions can also contact us, especially those who have internship opportunities, and we'll consider that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Genevieve, um, you know, would you want to, to add on? Yes, yes, so yes. yes. Also for us as well, we would also be recruiting uh, service providers uh, that would also support us with the, 
the trainings and the technical bit that I have talked about. So yes, it will be there. But the other bit also is the fact that um, private organizations or institutions can also come to us directly and say that, can we collaborate in order to, for example, deliver a service to a group of people that probably they work with. So that also is very open. And so uh, if, if there are companies and also private institutions that are within the space, the Western Ashanti space, that would love to work with us around using our integrated model of the OE I have mentioned, then it is highly welcome that we can do that MOU directly with them and then begin the implementation from there, just to add that. Okay. Thank you. There's a, there's a question from, from Nora and I'll take that. So Nora wants to know, um, if evidence generation has been considered as part of project implementation. So, so yes, there is, there's a lot of evidence generation that has been integrated into project design. Um, at, at baseline, we've, we, this market scan is part of the work we're doing, but we are also conducting needs assessment to have you know, a better sense of what the actual needs are and how, how the project can be targeted to meet those specific needs. But beyond that, the, the number of activities we would be undertaking to help us generate evidence, which would then inform, you know, how if we have to make any adaptions to project implementation. We'll be doing the number of research work we'll be doing, action research. We'll, we'll be doing um, a number of market research. The market scans will be done annually. Together with the, with the EU, we will also be conducting an impact assessment that specifically looks at um, issues around re resilience and, and livelihood. So th there's a lot we will be doing in the area of, of evidence generation and then using the new knowledge that we gain from the evidence generation to, to improve project implementation. Um, I think our time is almost up, but we'll take a few more questions and then we'll end. So let me go back to the participants. Uh, Are the there any new hands up? No, okay, I think all the hands up have already asked their questions. Uh, unless, so let me go back to the Q and A. Okay, so hold on, please. Okay, so there's a question from Technocrat Solomon. Um, he or she is asking, when is the, the project commencing recruitment? Um, Enoch? So for recruitment as in service recipients, we have started. Uh, we, currently we are rolling out um, our pilot training um, with 60 uh, service recipients. It would continue and until the project ends. So we have started, I must say. Uh, for service providers, uh, hopefully by close of this week, uh, you, you would see um, the advert for service providers call. Um, so this week, yes, you will do that. We have done some already with Resort 4, and then we will do this also. with it. So we have started already. Thank you for that information. Genevieve, um, would you want to add a point from the side of um, SMEs for, for incubation and acceleration? Um, yeah, I think that we are looking forward to engaging with SMEs to see what innovative products are out there and to see how we can add value from the green projects um, to improve the sector. So we are excited to engage and within the next couple of months we will be putting out the call for SMEs and if there are any potential SMEs, please point them to us and we'll be happy to engage with them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Genevieve. Uh, there's a last question from Lovan, from, from Lovans. Uh, now, let, let me read this out. So also regarding NGO roles, he says he thinks NGOs are mainly involved in awareness creation and policy advocacy as well as improving livelihoods of vulnerable communities. So his question is, how does the project intend to engage NGOs? 
He thinks it should involve capacity building of CSO staff to understand the importance of green projects and how they can integrate into their projects. Um, so this, this is a very, a very good point in terms of how we can engage you know, other, other actors in the, in the sector. But Enoch, would you, would you want to speak about how, especially for skills development, if there is an opening to engage um, CSOs and um, community-based um, NGOs, I would say? I think it's, it just hits the nail on the head. Uh, that is exactly what we seek to do. We would uh, build capacity of NGOs uh, around green and getting them to integrate green into their activities and all that. But for service providers, which also could be NGOs, uh, we are also hoping that uh, they would help with the awareness raising uh, of this program as well. So when, when the advert comes out, uh, it's both uh, NGOs, if you have the capacity to do the trainings and also the support, as well as also the awareness raising, definitely uh, you will be a part of the process. But his point and our point is also to build the capacity of NGOs so that they can adequately uh, market and promote uh, that, that as well, yeah, for us. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much, Enoch. Um, okay, so I think our time is up, but I, I still see two hands up. So we will give those two hands the, that have been raised the opportunity and once they ask their question, we would respond to that and we would, you know, effectively end the, the webinar. So, Stephen, I see your hand up. I think, okay, so... No, it's the brother. Stephen? Sorry, yeah, I forgot okay. to bring down my hand. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think, so you had earlier asked a question. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much. I think all the, all the questions have been exhausted. We are very, very grateful to, to all of you for you know, participating in this, in this webinar. It has been exciting. <laughs> Uh, there are some of you who have participated, who have participated in other webinars we have organized. We we began with the with the energy renewable energy webinar, and then there was one on COVID and its implications for service delivery to SMEs. Uh, nearly two weeks ago, there was the agri sector webinar, and today we have the wash webinar. We are grateful to to all of you for having taken time of your busy schedules to to join us. We look, we look forward to collaborating with all of you in, your, in the various capacities that you joined us, either as individual consultants, as service providers, as researchers, or as, as service providers in the public sector. We look forward to engaging all of you at the regional level, but also at the, at the national level. Um, so one, 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 announcement um, we'll be having our regional validation of of the needs assessment that we've we've conducted uh, in Kumasi and, and Takrade but this is going to be unlike this one that has been virtual those ones are going to be um, in person uh, we, we're going to be physically present but because of the you know the issues with COVID-19 it's going to be by invitation um, there is every possibility that some of you who are on this on this webinar and are based in the regions are going to be invited, and we would kindly ask that you know you would, as you have shown up in this webinar, you would also participate in the regional event when you are invited. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again for participating. Thank you. <laughs>